Voilà. Good evening, good afternoon. I see that uh, the recording of this webinar has started, so I would like to welcome everybody to the ENS webinar on nuclear new build and business models. The webinar will be moderated by Dr. Pavel Gaida. Pavel is a member of the board of the ENS board of directors, and in his day-to-day -day life, he teaches at the University of Science and Technology in Krakow. Pavel will moderate the the workshop, and so the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> thank you for joining us. Uh, when this idea of this webinar started, I was asked to present something about the uh, Polish nuclear power program and the recent developments here, but I thought that maybe we could present something that uh, some people from Poland uh, idea of uh, that, that they had, and that could be uh, relevant also to some uh, cases for some other programs in other countries. Uh, so we'll talk about it uh, shortly, I think, and I hope it will be interesting for, for everyone. And it will be, of course, about uh, financing models. Uh, um, uh, my name is Jan Horst Kepler. I'm uh, um, chief energy economist at the Nuclear Energy Agency of the OECD in, in Paris. And uh, we're currently doing a large project on uh, nuclear financing, and um, which of course nuclear financing, financing for nuclear new build. And I wanted to sort of uh, present very briefly some of the uh, uh, main axes, some of the main sort of sort of structuring lines of that work. I hope it all works. If I now share my um, my um, presentation. Okay, cost of capital and project structure in the financing of new nuclear power plants. Um, this is uh, a, a, new, a new project. We want to combine uh, uh, economics and, and finance, and of course, our insights from the knowledge of the uh, nuclear technology. And the idea is to lower the cost of capital to arrive at the socially optimal cost of capital for low carbon electricity projects in general through systematic de-risking, i.e. allocating the different risks in a new build project in a manner that allows uh, the party who's then taking care of that risk uh, to assume it in, a, um, in an optimal manner, in a long-term manner. Um, there are three, three key elements here. First is that the long-term risk-free rate, i.e. that uh, governments with uh, very good credit rating, can borrow in capital market, is at historic lows and likely to stay so. We all know that interest rates are going up, but uh, interest rates are going up uh, on, the, on the short end, not necessarily on the long end. And if you then deduct inflation, actually they still are extremely, extremely low. Another key point is that low carbon projects may be able to set up systemic investment risk. And then there exist specific measures to de-risk specific nuclear risks, political risk, electricity market price risk, and construction risk. Um, getting a nuclear new build project off the ground, financing is key, but it's not the only, uh, the only argument. Look at the three points. Uh, you also need a good project structure and efficient management, and you also need to take care of overnight costs as a key critical component. Uh, I'm not telling you anything new. Uh, financing costs are extremely important for nuclear. We'll pass on that very, very quickly. Also, I would like to say even the best thought out risk reduction structure cannot get rid of all risks. Some risks are still there, no matter who takes them on. So, we want to uh, uh, primarily reduce the economic cost of risk. Some risk cannot be reduced, some physical risk cannot be reduced. These are the different elements of our, of our uh, approach. And I would like to spend uh, a quick, uh, a quick uh, moment uh, on them because time is very short. I mentioned the risk free rate, which uh, high quality government bonds plus a country risk premium. 
correlation of nuclear power project with systemic risk. That is key uh, under what is called the capital asset pricing model, uh, which is sort of a standard model to assess capital uh, um, costs in economics and finance or financial economics. Uh, here, two pieces are important. The systemic risk, i.e. sort of the risk that the stock market might go down at a certain moment to, to make it very simple, and the correlation of a nuclear power plant with that systemic risk. And then these project-specific risks that I already mentioned, and I'll come back to at the very end. This is the formula. It's basically the same, it's the same thing I just said. You have the risk-free rate plus the beta, the correlation of a nuclear power project with the RS, the systemic risk, and then the sum of the project-specific risks. Um, uh, the, uh, the slides are, are, are made available, and uh, I would, uh, I would the ENF, the ENF to distribute it to participants after the meeting if they, are, if they should be interested. Um, well, um, we'll come back to these. these are, this is about the uh, project-specific or idiosyncratic risks. Uh, we'll, we'll come back to those uh, at the very end, and no need to go through them twice, as I sometimes do when I have more times. Let's look at the risk free rate. That risk for the uh, government bonds for governments with very high credit rating. Um, as of January this year, and uh, as I said in May, they are somewhat higher, but uh, but not substantially so. Um, the uh, the rate, the real yield, the real yield on inflation protected U.S. bonds was minus 0.1 percent. Um, the uh, um, in France, it was 0.94, but this is a nominal yield before inflation. So you deduct inflation, you're also uh, negative. And uh, I think the most striking example is provided by the UK, uh, where 50-year index linked, i.e. inflation protected gilt, gilt is a name for uh, long-term government bonds in the UK, uh, had a real yield of minus 2.39. People were willing to forgo 2% of their uh, capital each year in order to possess these UK gilts. So governments can currently borrow at very, very low rates, and they still can do so. And if you hear about trillion dollar investment programs in the United States, for instance, just to mention that example, uh, then that is only possible because we have these very, very low uh, interest rates. But perhaps the most, uh, how should I say, the most important example uh, or the most important element or the, 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 the most original element of our work has to do with systemic risk. Systemic risk is the general investment risk that the economy might turn down, uh, that the stock market might collapse. Uh, uh, I mean, a, a situation in which sort of the economy as a whole would uh, go through uh, a difficult time or a good time, but it move, everything would move together. The question is now, uh, a nuclear power project, how is it correlated with this sort of systemic risk? If we say the worst of a nuclear power plant is exactly like any other investment project, then better would be one. If we say uh, it moves uh, uh, faster than the rest of the economy or would sort of have, have particularly high ups and downs, then it might be might be uh, even bigger than one. But if you would think it is uncorrelated, then the beta would be zero, no link. Or if you think it might even be inversely related, i.e. the value of a nuclear power plant would go up when the economy goes down, or vice versa, if the economy goes up, the value of a nuclear power plant would go down, then it would be negatively related. And why do we think that that might be the case? Well, this is an argument that goes beyond, beyond nuclear and would apply to all low carbon projects. Uh, as climate change and efforts to combat climate change intensify, the implicit and explicit carbon price will rise. You're well aware in Brussels that the carbon price uh, for the ton of CO2 is now uh, uh, routinely uh, above 80, 90 uh, euros per ton of CO2. That's a sizable impact. And it will decrease the profitability of any project emitting by directly or indirectly being linked to 
carbon emissions. But precisely that sort of carbon constraint will increase the value of existing low carbon investments, including perhaps a nuclear power plant. And if that is true, then including a nuclear power plant or a share thereof into your investment portfolio would actually increase or reduce the risk and therefore increase the value of that investment portfolio. And investors would indeed accept very low returns on low carbon investments because they would reduce overall portfolio risk and provide portfolio insurance. And uh, we also have some, we have some uh, um, uh, empirical evidence for that. Uh, there was a recent paper in the uh, economic journal, the key paper in, in, in energy economics, in, 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 I'm saying the energy journal, not the economic journal, the energy journal, uh, which says one of the conclusions, high emitting assets are significantly more sensitive to economic wide fluctuations, that's another word for the better, than low emitting ones. And our results suggest that carbon emission reductions might serve as a valuable risk mitigation strategy. So this is not only uh, a purely theoretical thinking, but also there is some empirical evidence. This is a standard graph for the CAPM. You move from the blue set of portfolios without low carbon projects towards the green set of the portfolios with uh, um, uh, low carbon projects. And, uh, and uh, therefore, the expected portfolio risk would go down and uh, investors would prefer the green set, including low carbon projects rather than the blue set. Let me quickly conclude uh, about the project specific risk. Political risk, I think we all agree, that's something for governments to take care of. And if you look at the contracts, for instance, concluded in connection with Hinkley Point C in the UK, then that is very much what is the case. Let's come to electricity market price risk, a big, big issue. And, uh, and indeed, uh, if, we, if we look uh, at, uh, at uh, just some of some of the evidence uh, down there, this is these are hourly price or rather hourly changes in the uh, in the movement of dispatchable uh, technologies, which basically translates into movements in the electricity price. Or you have here in red uh, on on the top uh, an open cycle gas turbine, which in the last ten years had one single year in which it made a profit. So there's a lot of evidence that uh, we have very, very volatile electricity markets and uh, uh, they get more volatile due to the renewables. And what we do need is indeed long term contracts. And uh, we have a, a very good paper by, by somebody from, from EDF uh, called Benoit Peluchon, uh, uh, who has uh, 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 researched this kind of stuff. And uh, uh, if you look here at the three points, just to make very quickly, uh, we have deregulated market with residual carbon emissions, deregulated markets with net zero, and regulated markets with net zero. And you compare the capital costs, then by far the lowest capital costs are the regulated markets uh, with net zero, and by far the highest capital costs are the deregulated markets with net zero. Why? Because in a deregulated market under net zero, you basically uh, um, alternate between zero prices when you have too many renewables in the system and prices equal to the value of lost load, which can be in the hundreds of thousands of, of euros per megawatt hour, uh, because this is then where the system is the only way for the system to uh, 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 recuperate sufficient uh, money, of, we also talk of missing money, to recuperate the missing money in order to finance the necessary capacity. So very clearly, we can get the cost down, but it needs to be with, uh, with uh, uh, a long-term contract. Finally, uh, construction risk is, of course, the biggest, perhaps, risk. But there we know it is indeed a risk that is decorrelated from general economic risk. And there is a famous theorem in economics, the Aaron Lin theorem, that says uh, investments that are decorrelated from, uh, uh, from uh, systemic risk 
uh, if they are being taken on by a public authority and then distributes each share of that risk or the share, a very small share of that risk to each individual under its authority, that then will uh, to reduce total risk due to risk sharing has to do with uh, risk aversion of the individual. And the more you spread it, the less is the risk for each single person. Uh, that would be ratepayers, that could be taxpayers. And indeed, this is what is being done without the analysis that we're offering, but de facto that's what's happening with the regulated asset base in the UK or the construction work in progress in the United States. That's basically doing uh, what we are describing here. Let's come very quickly to the, to the end. If you put it all together, and then you have the risk-free rate, you have the absence of correlation or a negative correlation with the uh, systemic rate, plus you can reduce the risk in all the project-specific rates, and indeed the socially optimal cost of capital of a new nuclear power project is the risk-free rate plus the appropriate risk country risk premium. We never assumed in this analysis the idea of a social discount rate, which some people do, but this is a, a social construct. We, are, we, we, we stayed in this analysis very much in the realm of economics and finance. Um, we also have some elements on, on project management, incentive compatibility. We don't have the time today to go, to go into that, but uh, uh, it's, clearly, it's clearly an issue. Policy implications. Yes, uh, governments have a big role in, in, this, in this context. Uh, not so much because we say only public investments would have this socially optimal uh, rate, because as we said earlier, private investors, if the non-correlation with systemic risk really holds, really holds, then also private investors would indeed be willing to invest at very low rates of return. But we do need macroeconomic stability. We need framework setting. We also need uh, to implement the risk spreading and the political risk. Uh, and if the private market or if the private investors would not see the utility of uh, indeed uh, investing in low carbon projects and reducing overall portfolio risk, then indeed there would be a market failure where government would have a role to play. Uh, and of course, also questions of distribution fairness need to be uh, need to be addressed. Um, I will conclude here. Everything else is uh, is uh, how should I say uh, is context and is not at the heart of the matter. But I would be if there's any time left, I'm very happy to take any questions. Otherwise, perhaps another time. Thank you very much. I think Pavel might be back. He might have connection for mm -hmm. Yeah, I shall be back. I needed to switch the the device, so uh, I hope that you can share me now. Okay, so uh, thank you, Jan Horsman, again for your for your presentation. I think that we will wait for the questions to the very end to to have a session because there will be, I think, some questions that will be connected to uh, your presentation also to Bozenas and Lukas' presentations. So, uh, okay, I will try to continue now with mine. I hope that this time uh, technical glitches won't stop us uh, that easily. I will to try to do it uh, briefly. Okay. Okay, so going back to uh, to our current uh, situation or the, the plan, so uh, an important issue uh, next to, uh, to to decarbonization of the energy system is what we face now is uh, aging fleet. Uh, you can see here that uh, a lot of uh, units uh, now working in Poland are quite old. Of course, this, on this graph we can see number of units, not their power, because those oldest ones are usually around 100 megawatts, uh, and the newer are, are, are bigger. However, uh, in quite a significant share of, uh, of our grid needs simply new power sources, any new power sources, 
to to replace those agents with. So if you look, we look at uh, installed power. So more or less one third is already over 50 years old. Of course, luckily we don't need them all, all the time. However, if we look also on units that are over 40 years old in total, then about two thirds uh, of uh, Polish dispatchable um, installed power is already quite old and needs to be replaced uh, quite quickly. If we look uh, now at the governmental documents that are regulating what, what's going to, to happen, or at least uh, putting forward the, the plan. So important one is uh, Polish energy policy until uh, 2040. So this document was adopted in February last year. And if we look at it, there are some of those uh, pillars, uh, like uh, just transition zero energy, uh, energy system and uh, good air quality, because like in Polish case, uh, the air quality is a very important part of the uh, energy debate. Uh, even now, uh, issue of using coal for heating by individual users is uh, a big issue, uh, especially now when to the problems with air quality that it generates. Also, uh, the problems with uh, supply of coal uh, is now added due to uh, war in the Ukraine but it's uh, the other problem. So if we look at the uh, projects that are foreseen in there, we can see the strategic objective five, which is implementation of nuclear power. And if we look at this uh, foreseen uh, energy production, electricity production share by different sources, we can see introduction in uh, 2030s uh, of nuclear power. Uh, and it's foreseen to, uh, to produce uh, until in the mid uh, 2040s, uh, about one quarter of Polish uh, Polish electricity, at least according to the plan. Uh, more specific plans uh, about the nuclear power program can be seen in this official document, which is simply titled Polish Nuclear Power Program. Uh, it was adopted in October 2020. Of course, it was not a new plan. It was revision of the older uh, plan that needed to... Um, simply some revisions in terms of schedule, uh, some specific objectives, etc. So it's foreseen in this document that first unit would be operational in year 2033, so in 11 years from, uh, from now. And the official policy says that we should build six units uh, with total installed power of between six to nine gigawatt electric. And uh, all of those six units should be operational in year 2043. I will talk about the schedule a little bit um, uh, in a minute. And uh, what's important there is foreseen that there should be proven designs. And of course, because of that, there should be large, we mean more than one gigawatt installed power. And uh, it's explicitly also said that should be a pressurized water uh, reactor. Uh, in terms of potential uh, sites, uh, there were quite a uh, number of places considered. However, we can see on this map uh, those uh, orange ones are listed as other proposed sites that were uh, on the lot, long list of uh, possible locations. And so with this uh, bluish symbol, we uh, can see marked recommended sites. So for the first uh, nuclear power plant, it will be placed on the Baltic Sea. Uh, so we can see those two locations there, one called Lubiatovo Kopalina and the other is Zarnowiec. Uh, and uh, so one of them would be location of the first nuclear power plant. For the second one, the, those uh, top two spots that are considered it's, uh, more in the central Poland, so it's Pontnów or Bełchatów. Uh, now what's uh, important uh, in uh, recent uh, development that uh, environmental impact reports for Libyatovo, Kopalino and Zarnowiec uh, were uh, put forward to the General Directorate for Environmental Protection. Uh, so after those uh, reports will be accepted, we will be able to officially uh, choose the site for the first nuclear power plant. Uh, those two sites were there considered. Uh, however, Lubiatovo Kopalino is listed as the preferable location, and Zarnowiec is considered as the uh, secondary and axillary one. Uh, 
so a little bit about scheduling uh, in uh, the official program, it was foreseen that uh, the selection of the technology will be done by the end of 2021. It didn't happen. We now foreseen it to be uh, done by the end of this year. Uh, already we received uh, offers from two possible vendors. We are waiting for the third one. I will talk a little bit about technology later. And uh, what's important now that in year 2022, it was foreseen that the um, location and environmental impact decision would be received. So as I said before, uh, the environmental impact report was uh, was was finished and uh, it was put forward to the general directorate of environmental protection. So this uh, the things are going going forward. Um, so after that and of course choosing of technology, uh, there will be uh, time for preparation of of course safety reports and uh, uh, of course. Uh, Start of uh, the of preparation of the final project. And the uh, issuance of uh, permit uh, is foreseen to be by the end of 2025, with official construction start for the first unit in 2026. So then, in seven years, it is foreseen that there should be a first unit operational. And then, after uh, every two years, there should be another unit uh, operational. Uh, the policy says that there will be three in the first nuclear power plant and other three in the second one. So the uh, first full plant should be ready in the year 2037 and the full program should be uh, finished in the year 2043. Uh, so in terms of technology, of course, globally, in terms of large PWRs, uh, there are actually, what, five big vendors, so we can see them uh, there. So, of course, there's a Chinese Qualog One uh, with uh, uh, first uh, projects to be uh, now developed outside of uh, China. Of course, it's uh, Framatom with EPR reactor. It's uh, Kepco with APR 1400. Uh, of course, it's Western Cars with AP1000, and there's also other vendor that in current political situation, we, uh, I won't uh, say which one is that. Uh, however, we didn't even consider this technology before. In fact, also for geopolitical reasons, we never really considered uh, uh, Chinese technology. A couple of years ago, there were some very preliminary talks with, with, with Chinese also, but uh, it's actually ended. So uh, in actual, uh, still in the game, there are those three vendors uh, with already, we have offer from uh, French and Korean side. We are still waiting from, uh, for the offer from the American side. And uh, hopefully there will be decision uh, by the end of, uh, of this year. But what is important to mention is that uh, the official governmental program is not the only one currently under development, uh, because uh, there's some interest uh, in uh, Polish industry, especially in those companies that consume large amounts of electricity um, to develop their, uh, their own nuclear programs. Uh, because of those companies seeking for low carbon energy sources. So there's pro, uh, one program uh, by KDHM, uh, so uh, Polish uh, copper mining company uh, that signed a memorandum of understanding with NuScale uh, to, to possibly develop uh, construction of the NuScale small modular reactors uh, in Poland. And the other uh, program uh, is uh, led by two companies. One is the Sintos, uh, is a, a chemical conglomerate, uh, together with uh, Polish oil company Orlen. They already signed a bit of understanding with uh, G Hitachi to develop uh, Bevel RX uh, 300 reactors. So there is uh, this interest. Uh, in Polish industry to get involved in the nuclear power program. However, uh, they are looking for program that is sized uh, appropriately to their abilities to, to invest in the sources. However, I think that in today's presentation will show that uh, 
the industry that is interesting in low carbon sources can also uh, be uh, involved as uh, an investor also in investment or uh, in uh, their uh, big uh, nuclear uh, reactors. Uh, so to, to show it, I think I will end my presentation now. If there will be any question, I will have to answer. And now I will give voice to uh, Łukasz uh, Stawicki from uh, Polish uh, Ministry of uh, Climate and Environment. Uh, from the Nuclear Energy Department and Dr. Bożena Horbaczewska from Warsaw School of uh, Economics. Okay, thank you, Paweł. Uh, Łukasz, could you show the presentation? Yes. Um, just give me a couple of seconds. Um, Oh, I'm sorry, because uh, the presentation was open, so from the beginning, yes, this is the first slide. Okay, Bożena, the floor is yours. Yes, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> uh, as uh, as Paweł said, uh, I work as an um, uh, assistant professor in the uh, Department of Economics, was a School of Economics, uh, and uh, today I'm going to, um, to present you um, the SAHO model prepared, developed, uh, by me together with Łukasz Sawicki. Um, it's only uh, it's only a theoretical model, but uh, I think that maybe it may be um, very uh, interesting for you. Uh, so, um, but uh, uh, on on the very beginning, the very important uh, disclaimer. Uh, well, in this presentation, we show our own opinions, which uh, should not be identified with the position of the institutions we work in. Uh, for the last uh, few years, uh, we, uh, I mean me and Lukas, uh, we have been analyzing business models used in um, NPP projects in uh, European Union and uh, in other countries. Uh, all those models have advantages and uh, disadvantages, and there are some uh, disadvantages. Uh, they are more uh, interesting. Uh, so um, the disadvantages we have uh, identified, um, generally speaking, are concerned on uh, first of all on the country and EU regulations, uh, political risk, and uh, also the public acceptance for nuclear power. On the investment stage, there are high costs, high risk, uh, and uh, high expected risk in a premium, long term on investment, and long term on uh, long term of um, return on investment. And uh, when it uh, comes, no, no, when it comes okay. to the operational phase, uh, there is a risk of uh, low capacity factor, um, also stable revenues and the market price of energy are the biggest concern, as we know from the um, Mr. Kepler presentation. And now, next slide, please. Uh, um, uh, no wonder then that uh, business models uh, implemented so far have been uh, focused on ensuring stable revenues and stable energy prices for energy producers, uh, on providing subsidies and tax exemptions, which uh, in fact are projected to give the same effect. And also um, traditional methods of investment price evaluation, uh, investment project evaluation are not appropriate to the long-term investments we deal with in uh, nuclear power. And next slide, please. Uh, some NPPs work outside the energy markets and uh, in such cases, business models implemented are able to reduce many of those problems and kinds of risk by um, buying uh, energy through special trading companies like in uh, Exeltium or uh, by producing to meet all needs, like in uh, Mancala model. 
there are still some problems uh, that need to be solved because generally the models are not able to decrease electricity costs for consumers uh, with some exceptions like Mancala, uh, like Mancala in, uh, in Finland. But uh, we do not have any universal solutions. Solution. These uh, models are rather country specific, uh, characterized by uh, high uncertainty related to European Commission acceptance, by uh, need for significant changes in law, and by building complex financing mechanism uh, for investment and uh, operational op operational phases. In a word. Uh, they are very complicated, but they do not solve the problem of nuclear financing. Um, and finally, uh, after all, all this work, we came to the conclusion that uh, there is uh, a need and a space uh, for rethinking and uh, a, a new fresh look at the problem is necessary because uh, we need a, a new and innovative, uh, innovative business solution. And we have accepted uh, this uh, intellectual challenge. Uh, first of all, we decided to find, uh, to choose, in fact, some focal points. In Poland, we have the document, uh, documents uh, Pavel um, told about, energy policy, which defines energy security. One of its uh, dimensions is providing the energy in an economically justified manner. So it is the first focal point for us. In fact, in Poland, no enterprise nor even a group of the largest enterprises is able and willing to bear the burden of investing in large blocks. They are interested in small blocks, but not in large blocks planned in the in the Polish program. Uh, in this uh, situation, the state uh, engagement will be required. In fact, most of NPPs, or maybe even all NPPs project uh, all over the world, benefit more or less from the state support. Uh, but if so, the appropriate business model should stick to the principle public money, public benefit. The most uh, obvious public benefit, in our point of view, is the lowest cost of energy for energy consumers, and uh, as you can see, we are not focused on profit of the NPP company. Uh, we started with uh, formulating uh, some uh, criteria of a perfect business model for nuclear power, and uh, we have uh, 12 of them. First of all, a low electricity costs for consumers, stability of revenues for NPP company, a guarantee of electricity offtake, uh, financing investment uh, with low cost capital, compliance with existing uh, regulations, uh, possibility to implement in a fast and easy way, uh, then <clears throat> uh, assuring uh, or at least uh, giving high chances for public uh, acceptability, transferring part of the risk to the state, but only in the short run, limiting of the financial burden of the state budget <clears throat> in the long run, and then providing business flexibility from the investor's point of view, enabling long-term state engagement in nuclear power and applicable to um, applicability to the various nuclear projects in different legal system, systems. And um, finally, we uh, developed the model meeting all these uh, criteria. Uh, the results of our efforts have been published last year in International Journal of Management and uh, Economics. You can easily find it if you are interested um, in uh, in a research guide or in Siendo resources or simply by typing um, the Saho model into your internet search engine. Uh, uh, and the next slide, please. Thank you. And the short description of the model, starting with the name of it. The name of the model comes from our surnames, Savitsky and Horbaczewska. And uh, if you want to, uh, to, uh, to know the Saho model in one sentence, uh, it's uh, that the state builds an NPP 
and sells it to the electricity consumers. From then on, they offtake the electricity generated in their own NPP at production costs. So it is a state uh, initiated and optionally controlled private cooperative of uh, end users. We did not make uh, it up from the very beginning. The SAHO model is based on the best features of um, uh, existing models. But uh, thanks to the different point of view and uh, the focal points chosen by us, we could see a different picture uh, and we, we were able, we could uh, develop a, a new solution. We have uh, prepared several versions of the model uh, and Vukash will tell you about them. OK, thank you, Bożena. So um, in our so-called pre-basic concept, uh, um, uh, the nuclear RSPV, uh, we call it uh, SAHO NPP, uh, is created uh, by the so-called initial investor, which is a state-controlled company. It may be also an investment fund and so on. Such kind of investment funds exist in most uh, in most developed countries, also in Poland. Uh, the initial investor organizes the whole investment process, uh, including financing and takes over all kinds uh, of risk that can be effectively managed uh, by the government. Uh, we mean political or regulatory, uh, some economic uh, risks and so on. And this was also, also uh, uh, referred to by, by Mr. Kepler in, in, in his presentation today. In our pre-basic concept, the initial investor sells its shares to the electric electricity consumers, which we called uh, final investors, just before the grid connection. And from then on, they, they have the right and even an obligation to offtake the electricity and cover all the production costs, uh, like in Polish industrial power, uh, the auto producers, uh, like in the American public uh, power and cooperatives, and uh, like in Finnish Mankale, or even in the German renewable cooperatives uh, model. So this is how it looks like uh, in a graphically. So uh, we can see that uh, from the SPV setup up to the grid connection, the power plant is 100% owned by the state in some form. And from the grid connection, um, if from, the, from, the, from the moment when the electricity is provided to the grid, and, and of course to the electricity consumers, uh, the 100% the ownership uh, goes to the uh, goes to the electricity consumers. So this is this, this is a general idea of, of the model. As Bozena mentioned, uh, we have prepared uh, several versions of, of this model. Uh, the basic concept which was published in our paper, uh, looks uh, the following. Um, uh, in the period between the establishment of the project company uh, and the connection to the grid, the initial investor uh, gradually sells its shares uh, to electricity consumers. Of course, the closer to the project completion, the lower project risk. Uh, this can be discounted in the share price. The lowest, they are the lowest at the, the, the price is the lowest at the beginning and the highest just before the grid connection, but still, it is attractive to the potential final investors. And of course, initial investors, uh, in, initial investor uh, leaves the project with the last tranche of shares uh, shares sold before the um, grid connection. And how, um, and this is how it looks like. And we, we published it uh, in our paper. And this is of course, just for il illustration purposes. Uh, the one of the versions uh, we prepared or the versions of this model assumes uh, we can we can add uh, some intermediary uh, some intermediate investor uh, investors which can be financial institutions uh, initial investor is allowed to sell uh, the saho npp shares to those uh, the to those investors at the subsequent stages of the investment project on market non discriminatory terms uh, however, the more advanced uh, the project uh, implementation, the lower the risk and the higher the selling price of uh, these shares. Uh, also in this version of the model, funds raised from the sale uh, of, these, of these shares may be used to finance the construction of further nuclear units. Uh, this was called money recycling uh, by some, uh, some person who 
seen who was um, how to say it um, uh, a re reviewer reviewer of our model at the initial stages uh, i i think that this would be the the, the best word and and uh, he recommended that this this could be this could be a good phrase um uh, an integrated investor must sell, of course, uh, the shares to the final investor, to the electricity consumers, the final investors before the grid connection, uh, because the shareholder is obliged to offtake uh, the electricity. Uh, the stake. Uh, the state can guarantee its right to oversee these transactions, uh, of course, and this is how it uh, how it looks like. Of course, um, this modification to the model has both pros and cons. Uh, if, um, for on on the on the one hand, uh, the the um, the participation of the inter of, of financial institutions may increase the credibility um, of the project of the investment, but uh, f f on the other hand, uh, the the like like I mentioned, uh, the the price of the shares uh, offered to the final investors uh, will be surely uh, higher. Uh, what could be the types of shareholders? Uh, I, we mean uh, the the, uh, the final investors, industry, um, transport like railways, uh, commerce uh, in various forms, uh, local governments, this is similar to US and European public power companies uh, owned by local governments, and uh, national government institutions like state ag agencies, uh, law enforcement institutions, households, yes, it is possible for dedicated energy cooperatives like in the United States or even in Germany for renewables. Um, also, investor-owned energy companies, to the extent not distorting the idea of the model or uh, or as a last uh, resort in, in case uh, in case uh, there is no possibility to sell all the shares to the um, uh, to the consumers to the electricity consumers but we do not uh, we do not consider it uh, of uh, of uh, significant uh, um, of significant um, probability uh, final investor is uh, allowed to trade in shares with limitations due to the national security, state control, uh, or for technical reasons. Uh, there are some instruments of state control over the NPP. Accor according to the applicable national laws and regulations, they also exist, uh, do exist in Poland. Uh, mm, uh, this is how it, how this could be look could look like um, uh, in in practice and of course this graph is also just for illustration purposes uh, so here we have uh, all the all the categories of uh, electricity consumers uh, we previously uh, mentioned and there are also some government institu institutions and then households but the biggest part could be probably industrial consumers because uh, they are the they are the the most convenient um, the most convenient partner to uh, to um, to negotiate uh, with, uh, I mean the the, the selling the, the shares, uh, they of course uh, have um, have access to um, to the capital, uh, and they probably in most countries they consume the the biggest part of electricity uh, produced. Uh, so to sum up, what are the advantages of the um, of the Saha model? Um, there are several of them. First, of uh, first, and and probably uh, the the most important one, uh, at least from from our point of view, from the Polish point of view, is that the model allows for significant decrease of the electricity costs for consumers. Uh, it also hedges against the electricity price risk uh, for consumers, especially those uh, industrial in in, in that, those in industri industrial sectors in both short uh, and long term. Uh, the model operates in a specific area of electricity market in its broadest sense, uh, and so it, it's not vulnerable to most of uh, of challenges of electricity market. Uh, the model ensures the electricity uh, offtake. It, it provides stable revenues for the NPP company. Uh, it complies with existing and expected EU regulations and policies. Of course, this is uh, not important to countries which are not part of the European Union. Uh, 
uh, it allows to finance the investment to its lowest possible cost of capital. Uh, it increases public acceptability and support for nuclear power, both because of um, decreasing electricity bills, but uh, also because uh, mm, the households can be uh, can possess um, shares of of NPP, so uh, so they can be owners of a nuclear power plant. So mm, this is. Uh, um, uh, this is very beneficial from the, let's say, from the social point of view. Uh, the model can be uh, implemented in a fast and relatively straightforward way because uh, it can be based on existing regulations. Uh, it, it transfers uh, part of the risk to the state in the short run. Uh, it limits the financial burden to the state and public budgets uh, in the long run, and this is the money recycling we uh, I, uh, I mentioned uh, on the previous slides. Um, it allows for business flexibility to investors, uh, enables the long-term state engagement in nuclear power development because of uh, subsequent uh, and constant uh, building of uh, additional nu nuclear units. Um, it can be applied to various nuclear projects in different uh, legal system, and this is not only our opinion. Uh, it's, and uh, the last two points are especially important uh, in Polish context, but I think also in in many other countries because it's 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 universal. Uh, the model supports reindustrialization because of uh, cheap electricity, uh, competitiveness, and improves economic conditions, including limited of the inflation, which is especially in, important uh, nowadays, um, and it maximizes the use of national capital while not negatively impacting the economy of the nuclear project because uh, uh, the, mm, the, the, the nuclear power plant construction is uh, refinanced by the capital uh, owned by the uh, electricity consumers. Uh, so, uh, what do we do with the model currently um, and what are activities uh, in our country and also and also outside? Um, the model has been presented and debated to national and inter international conferences, including in the Polish Senate uh, and in uh, several universities in Poland and also um, in the IAEA, IAEA uh, workshop. Uh, we received uh, many positive opinions from financial experts, uh, from power sector managers and international financial, financial institutions, uh, as well as from NGOs, both Polish and foreign. Uh, and yes, there, there is already an interest of the model declared by Polish industry and uh, large cities, as well as uh, by one foreign government. Uh, of course, uh, like Bozena said uh, uh, on the beginning, uh, the model is, at least for, for this moment, is uh, just theoretical, but uh, actually we constructed uh, one nuclear unit uh, based on, on, on this model. Uh, this is uh, how it looks like. It, it has all the elements uh, of uh, modern Gen 2 or Gen 3 uh, power plant, the reactor building, turbine hall, auxiliary buildings, administrat administrative building, uh, the water intake, pumping station, the ventilation stack, and even transmission lines, uh, and even a tsunami wall because it's on the, on the seashore. Uh, so uh, just a couple of information about us, uh, but this is the last uh, the last uh, slide of our presentation. So uh, thank you very much. And of course, uh, if there are any questions, we'll be happy to, to, to answer. OK, thank you very much. Uh, so now we can uh, move forward to the Q&A session. So if anyone has a question, please uh, raise your hand first and you can ask uh, both uh, Bozena and Lukas, and of course Jan Horst, any question that you uh, that you like. Okay, I can see first person raising your hand. It's uh, Hemant Kumar. Please go ahead. Emilia, sorry, I think you have to un. You have to uh, unmute the, the participant. I did already, so you can try to switch on the microphone.
if uh, there's a problem with uh, Mr. Kumar, who can come in uh, at any time when once he has uh, resolved the uh, problem with his micro. Uh, I have a question to Lucas and uh, Bush. Is that okay if I pose it? Of course, of course. Um, yeah, I, I, I think uh, overall in your model, you're, you're on to something very, very important. Uh, that the, uh, that a, a nuclear power plant project while doing construction phase is a high risk project. Once it has been commissioned, it's a low risk project. So you would in principle want to have different sorts of investors during construction and different sorts of investors during operation. And I think that is, that is really sort of the, the, most, uh, the most important point in your, in your presentation. And then you also says the second very important point in my eyes, you need to organize a process of gradual transfer of ownership. You need to organize it from the start. So you need to define milestones. At this point, we'll sell 20%. At this point, we'll sell 40%. And so forth and so forth. You'll need to define milestones very much from the start. So you have to think about this transfer at the very beginning. And, and I, I agree fully with, with, both, uh, with both, both points. However, I have one, one particular question. Why do you uh, not think of uh, the operators of the nuclear power plant after commissioning? Why do you not think that they should be the investors or at least partly be the investors? No need that they are completely uh, the investors. Why? Because that would very elegantly, very neatly uh, internalize operational risk. You would want the people who have the most to win and to lose from uh, the operations of the power plant. You would like them to be in charge in the sense of sort of that they really sort of uh, have the profits and the losses if they do a good job or if they do a less of a good job. So. I would definitely think that the operators of the nuclear power plants, once it has been commissioned, should be part of the group of investors. Uh, it depends what we mean, the, the, the operators. Uh, do we mean uh, the energy companies or just the operators of the power plant? Uh, because, uh, for for example, in United States, we can have uh, these two two types in different new nuclear power plants. Uh, for example, uh, there are some uh, NPPs uh, which are di directly operated uh, by the by the owners, and the same is also more or less in in, in Mankala uh, in Finland because the the TVO, right. which is the operator of the of the of the um, uh, of the alkyl water plant, is uh, directly owned by uh, by the shareholders of the let's say the electricity consumers and uh, and um, uh, energy companies, uh, both large and 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 small ones, uh, and of course uh, the the second model of uh, of operation of the plant is. Uh, to hire, in fact, um, an, um, an independent operator, which is paid for for its services as as operating as as operating the plant, and uh, but from the let's say fr from the principle of of this model, it, it, f uh, for this moment, it's uh, we do not consider it so so much important. But of course, the model is flexible and and uh, is able to um, it is possible to to place. Uh, um to, to have both of these uh, both of these type of of of, um, of ownership and operation we can have you can have uh, um, a direct ownership and operation and we can also uh, i mean the the the, the final investors uh, may also hire a, a, an independent operator like in in many cases in in, in the united states I, I don't know if bozena would add something to that no thank you <laughs> OK, did I answer your question or should uh, I cl clarify some? Yes, I, I, I just think uh, we should not exclude them from the from the setup of, of investors. And I think the the biggest the biggest uh, um, idea, so the, sort of the guiding idea in all of this discussion is, is who is a best able uh, to reduce the risks? 
and that would be the operator. We would think uh, the the operational risk can can be reduced in the in the uh, uh, in in the actual uh, um, uh, operation. And uh, and the second uh, question is who would be willing to pay the most money uh, uh, for the for the remaining uh, or for the remaining for the operating power plant? And and there I I, I do think I mean uh, we're we're working here in France. Uh, a company such as EDF, but I mean, uh, it doesn't need to be EDF, uh, uh, could, could, in my eyes, extract the most value from that plant precisely if they are, if they are the owner and, uh, and the operator. At the same time, I think uh, some, some state involvement uh, at the, in, in the, during the construction phase is, is absolutely, absolutely necessary. Uh, I also think that uh, this is not my idea, but it has been around for a while. That, uh, as you are well aware of, a nuclear power plant will will last for at least 60 years, maybe 80, and and that might match uh, to some extent very nicely the liabilities of pension funds. So pension funds have, of course, no experience whatsoever to either uh, build a nuclear power plant nor to operate it. However, given that uh, sort of the the they need to pay off uh, pensions in a long, very long time ahead, sort of owing an asset that sort of reliably sort of uh, uh, provides a certain number of profits might be very, very uh, useful and, and valuable to them, and they might therefore be willing to pay a very high price for it. So uh, I, I think. Those, those kind of arguments, which are of course part of the, 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 the larger framework that you're offering, but that sort of thinking could give uh, uh, even more structure, I think, to, to some of the arguments. And, and these are two I would think immediately of that, that you might uh, want to integrate it in, in further refinement of your work. Uh, well, I think uh, it is possible, of course, to, to to engage pension funds in the long term operation of the of the power plant, uh, but uh, they would need to uh, to have business agreements with energy companies or at least a set up an energy company for trading of the of, of the uh, of the electricity uh, produced uh, in, in this power plant. But of course, Still, it, it is possible, and um, I guess it would be. Uh, I'll 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 share my I'll share my screen if uh, if Pavel has uh, nothing against it, uh, just to show um just to Can show. Go ahead. Yeah, just to show one uh, one slide. Uh, do Do you see my screen now? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so I'll show you, maybe this slide. Uh, okay, uh, maybe. Um, uh, so here um, uh, we, we we have um, on the yellow uh, investor-owned energy companies, and I think this could be potentially the place for the for the pension funds, uh, not directly, of course, but uh, but um, investor-owned energy companies that either uh, owned by the um, uh, by the pension funds or uh, having some business agreements with uh, with them so potentially this could be this could be uh, the place in this model however as we as we mentioned uh, as we mentioned um yes for example in this slide uh, this uh, we intend um, uh, we allow uh, this kind of uh, this kind of engagement but to the extent not distorting the idea of the model uh, because the idea of the model is uh, to provide uh, the cheapest possible electricity for uh, for the end users and of course any uh, investor owned energy company uh, will will sell electricity uh, on the market uh, price and not on the production cost so uh, but of course the model is flexible and uh, as i mentioned it is possible to to place uh, financial financial institutions uh, with uh, long for long term uh, operation for example in this um, in, in this place uh, right uh, here uh, to, to be totally honest I, I would think the pension funds coming in only on the right hand side of your graph i wouldn't expect uh, a, a pension fund to be interested during uh, during construction uh, i would only uh, expect them to be interested once the plant is up and running. They, they, they have absolutely no experience in construction. They don't know how to evaluate that risk. They wouldn't want to come in at that point. 
uh, I, I basically meant this as an extension of your model. Uh, basically, once commercial operations is assured, there I think pension funds would would be interested in that sort of asset. Uh, if I may say um, some um, some uh, words, uh, we never know if they are interested uh, in um, operational phase or in investment phase. Um, in theory, uh, financial institutions uh, are the institutions who uh, take the risk for some time and uh, who uh, which are paid for for the risk taken. So uh, the, the best place for the financial institution, uh, pension fund is financial institution, uh, is uh, the place, uh, could you Kash, say, uh, 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 show the, oh, this slide, thank you, uh, is the place uh, uh, between the investor, um, uh, the initial investor state and the final investors who are energy consumers. Uh, so this is the place for the financial institution to uh, take the risk and uh, in the end selling the, the, the shares to, to get the price for the risk taken. Uh, that's uh, our idea. Of course, in the real life, uh, it is not like in the theory. <laughs> and uh, some financial institutions, maybe all financial institutions, are looking for the uh, projects with uh, low or no risk uh, and uh, with uh, a very high price uh, uh, or very high uh, return gain. Um, but uh, if we have here the theoretical SACO model, we can uh, <laughs> place the financial institutions uh, in, uh, in such a place. <laughs> I think so, and I think it's uh, possible they, they, they could be uh, interested in such an investment. It could also be, um, in, uh, in our point of view, it could also be very, um, uh, how to say, uh, uh, with light words, um, uh, I mean that uh, if the financial institutions are mm, shareholders, they are mm, highly motivated uh, in uh, uh, closing the program. So uh, uh, the, the average level of motivation when we have only the state as an investor and, this, and the second situation, the state and the financial institutions is, is growing in our point of view. So it is uh, beneficial, I think, um, for, for, the, for the program, for the, um, for the, uh, for the um, investment to have such an financial institutions uh, in, uh, in this uh, intermediate phase. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, uh, there are, there are, there are, of course, you're absolutely right in this different uh, kinds of uh, financial institutions with different uh, with different risk uh, appetites and different risks uh, uh, profiles the, the the only point where i have uh, a sort of a little bit of a i don't know a question rather uh, um, than than anything else is if you ask financial institutions uh, to come in during construction phase these are risks that they are not very familiar with so they will ask for very high risk premiums. They will ask for very high price in order to take on those risks. And I would definitely think during construction phase, that is where government, and this is of course your point, and, and I, I think that that's a key point, that is where government should really bear the brunt of the risk because it has the best, how shall I say, it has the best, uh, wherewithal, the best means, the best instruments to, to reduce the construction risk and also to spread it amongst taxpayers so that everybody is only sort of carrying a very small portion of the risk so that the overall risk is, is then, or the overall economic cost of that risk is then reduced. I, I think that that would be sort of my, my take on it. If you have any financial institutions willing to accompany the government, perfect. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, I wouldn't worry about it. They will come in once it's up and running. Financial institutions will be very, very, very interested. Uh, yes, you know, but uh, as Pavel said, uh, in our Polish program, we have uh, planned uh, six units 
Yeah. Even if we assume that the first unit will be built uh, um, as the pre-basic, uh, Lukasz, could you show the pre-basic um, uh, concept? Uh, uh, yes, uh, just give me a second. Yeah. Um, if the first unit is built with this uh, ownership structure, we right. can we can easily assume that the next one, I mean the the second and the, the next one, uh, may may could be built with uh, the. Lukasz, could you say uh, show the next one <laughs> with this kind of uh, ownership structure? So uh, uh, if you uh, uh, take a look at the whole program. Not mm. one unit, but the whole program. You you have the different picture. You don't have to uh, have all the positive uh, results on the with the first unit. You can wait. Yeah. I, I I agree. As the program advances, yes, the risk there's learning yes. and risk reduction, and then also the the ownership structure can change in function of that uh, risk reduction. Absolutely. Uh, that was our point. Yeah. No, I I agree with that. Yeah. Perfect. Could could I have a question now? To, oh yeah, to, by, all, by all means. I, I'd like to ask about your presentation because uh, your presentation was very interesting and very informative. Too uh, informative for the for the, uh, the for the short time. <laughs> so uh, if uh, if uh, you could share your presentation with uh, with us or with me at least. <laughs> uh, no, I, I sent it. I sent it to. Uh, um, uh, uh, what, what's um, the, the, the Emilia? Emilia. Uh, Emilia has it, and I would ask her to send it to to okay. the uh, okay. to the Thank participants. You. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I can just say that the presentation will be available. So if anyone uh, wants to get them, please contact uh, EMS, and we will we will share all the presentation that were that will shown today. Great. Right. And I would once again encourage uh, anyone in the audience, if you want to ask a question, please raise your hand. We have still, I think, a couple of minutes. Uh, we already reached uh, the ending time, but I think that if it's another one or two questions, we can still take them. So if you want, please go ahead. I don't see any other questions, so I think that we will shortly conclude. I would uh, thank very much Jan Horkepler for uh, taking part. I will thank Bożena uh, Habatista Lukas Savitsky for presenting also the SAHO model. Of course, I will thank uh, Kirsten and Emilia for helping to organize this webinar. And of course, uh, all of you in the audience uh, in taking part and listening about this uh, Quite important uh, issues and some ideas about uh, financing of the future nuclear project. Yeah, thank you very much from my side as well from for the very interesting presentations and above all for for the discussion. I very much enjoyed the discussion. I think it was perfect. <laughs> it's very nice. Great. Thank Thanks you very that. much. Thank you. Yeah. The webinar yeah. has been recorded and will be available on the ENS YouTube channel. And as mentioned already before, if there's interest in the presentations, please contact my colleague Emilia, Emilia Janisch at euronuclear.org. Okay, thank you very much. Have a nice evening. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. See you. Bye.